Joining us now, our favourite person to talk to each and every week, the great Megan Kelly. Lovely to see you, mate. Some craziness in the States, as always, including these idiot college presidents, the ones who have been very clear that they hate all forms of discrimination, but they're kind of cool with due hatred. And on your show today, I love, I love that you went to a place I can't go, which is you've had enough of woke women. Oh my gosh, all three of these ladies are products of DEI hiring. There's no question. There was a wave of incoming for, we've got to get women, we've got to get women of color to run these universities. Well, that would have been fine if they had been qualified, but very clearly they aren't. There was a time in the not so distant past where we had, yes, it tended to be men, it wasn't always, but smart people who cared about high academics and rigor and honesty and ethics who would get these positions after a long, long period of proving themselves. That is not what's happening here. These are DEI hires. Claudine Gay is a black woman. Yay, yay. And that got her this position. And if you look back at her writings over the course of her career, they've always been about one thing, race. Race, 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 race. And that's how you get to be the president of Harvard University in modern day America. I mean, she did race as her dissertation. She talked about race down in Brazil. What if you're like, a little bit black and a little bit white, and you live in Brazil, are you Afros? What, this is her writing. This is how she spent her life thinking and musing when it comes to academia. You know what that makes you? The president of Harvard. So is anybody shocked that like the rest of these woke losers who are on the streets protesting for the Intifada and for death to Israel, she sees that co conflict unfolding right now, I believe, as oppressor and oppressed and even though the Palestinians and Hamas launched the attack on Israel, they have brown skin, so they are the oppressed. That's what I believe led to her ridiculous testimony in front of Capitol Hill, which for the first time in her life endorsed free speech. Do you know how many people she has kicked out of Harvard or punished at Harvard for their free speech? It doesn't matter whether you're black or white when it comes to this. You say something that offends Claudine, you're out of there. It doesn't matter whether you apologize, whether you were a kid who got admitted, and old texts came up and you said you were sorry because you were a kid, you're out. Claudine gives no quarter for anybody who says anything that comes up to the line when it comes to black people, for example, or policing in America. But the Jew hatred, well, we have a First Amendment, people. We have to live up to its principles. I don't make the rules, I'm just here to enforce them. Sure. Who is the creep who is swimming with kids in Canada? We talked about this guy. Was it last week, two weeks ago? We talked yeah. about this guy. There's more, He's at it again. He's a serial swimmer with 13-year-olds. He's part of a swim club that is for little girls. It's called the Otter Swim Otters Swim Club up in Ontario, Canada. His name is Nicholas Cepeda. He goes by Melody Wiseheart. <laughs> I mean, it would be, it'd be funny if it weren't so disturbing. He's now, last time he was swimming with 13-year-olds, now he's been uh, in the locker room at a meet involving eight-year-olds up to 16-year-olds, uh, went into the locker room and changed with the little girls, observed and reported by Rebel News, who then found a little girl who confirmed she was in there and saw it, and that this is an intact male. No surgeries have been done, not that that would help, but just for what it's worth. And so Melody would really like us to look the other way as he takes up a swim lane against these other little prepubescent girls. Mm. This is a sick, sick man. And the parents and the league and Canada are allowing it. Rebel News took out its camera to try to photograph this guy as they blew the whistles and they dove into the pool. And somebody came over to him and I thought for sure this woman's gonna say, what are you photographing? Oh my God, there's a man, what do you mean? Huh? She was like, put down the camera, no videotaping allowed. Madam, you're focused on the wrong issue. There's a grown man in a bathing suit next to the 10 year olds out there. For the love of God, somebody, I'm sick of how nice the Canadians are. You need somebody like me to go up there and sit <laughs> poolside and trust me, I will take care of him and he will not be swimming down that pool. I, I would be in there like I was a drowning woman. Like, hello, <laughs> help me. Nicholas Cepeda's in the lane, get him out of here. Something's going to have to change. This can't go on. 
We love you. All right, our satellite time is about to be gone, so I just want to simply say this. It's my last uh, time on the air uh, for the rest of this year. We'll see you again next year. But, Megan, we love you from Australia. We love your fire up, and I can't wait to talk in that big year of 2024 in the U.S. All the best to your family, darling. Right back at you and to your beautiful audience. It's been a pleasure spending the year with you guys.